Cosmos Experiment, so that stands for Main Injector Neutrino Oscillation Research Experiment. Uh, the, main in, the MINOS experiment uses neutrinos which are made by the MUMI beamline. That's MUMI is N-U-M-I, the neutrinos of the main injector. Um, at, this, at this accelerator, as you might know from other tours, the only thing that gets accelerated are protons. So any other particle you want to study, you have to make it somehow. Right? To do the collider experiments, protons are easy. We're already accelerating those, but we have a whole machine to make and store antiprotons in order to do the proton on antiproton collider experiments. So we have to, there's a whole, like I said, a whole machine structure, a whole machine schedule to make antiprotons. Same way here, that if we want to study neutrinos, we have to use the protons to make a neutrino beam. So how do we do that? It's actually pretty straightforward. There's um, a particular kind of meson particle, a pi plus. It's actually a very easy particle to make. It's the lowest state uh, meson. Mesons are made from two quarks, so it's got it's got an up quark and a down quark. Two down, two plus. It's pi plus, pi minus, pi zero. They're all kind of collectively together. Um, so there are actually when you hit protons on some on a target, any piece of metal uh, or any piece of anything actually, <laughs> on air even hydrogen. Um, then a lot of what, there's all sorts of things that get produced, but most of what gets produced are, in fact, pions. Pions live for a little while, and when they decay, they decay into, um, uh, well, this is a, a muon, they decay into a lepton and a neutrino. And neutrinos, um, if you've been going to any of the summer lecture series by now, you must have seen the little box many, many times. Like, you know, here's all the family of particles and particle physics, right? So there's three generations. That means there's three different flavors of three flavors, three different flavors of neutrinos, each one belonging to each of the three generations. And those flavors are tagged by one of these leptons. So a pion decays into a muon neutrino accompanied by a muon. And in fact, the reason that those two always appear together is the reason that you call this a muon neutrino. There's also electron neutrinos. There's also tau neutrinos in the same sort of ways that when, when those particles are produced, they in turn are always produced in conjunction with either an electron, right? The, the, the electron neutrino and the electron always appear together, and the tau particle and the tau neutrino always appear together. Uh, uh, so, so for us, well, in the end, so why do we pick this particular one? There's, well, there's reasons for the physics measurement we're trying to do, which is why we wanted to make, to use uh, muon neutrinos. But in fact, also, this is probably the easiest way to get a very intense neutrino beam because it's really easy for us, starting with protons, to make the pions. So we can make huge amounts of pions, which will then decay into relatively huge amounts of neutrinos. Um, so that's basically all we're doing. We have a so we have a beam line that starts. This is, this line represents the main injector sitting up here in a circle. We take protons out of the main injector and we start sending them downhill. I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, it, those those protons uh, hit a target located in our target hall. The target literally uh, this was a prototype target. The target is actually there. Was, little black things in here. They're little narrow slivers. It's The target is graphite. It's about a meter long. It's actually made out of a, it's, been, it's like a piece of graphite that's been cut into a comb shape. So these little fingers of graphite reach down. And there's a reason for that, mostly having to do with cooling. It can be a cooling. It's a solid material when you're hitting it with a lot of protons all at once in a very short burst, which is what we do. You're dumping a lot of energy in it generates a lot of heat in a shock wave. And one of the ways you keep your target from basically blowing up and flying into little pieces is to break it up into little segments. But all that proton beam goes through about a meter of graphite. And out the other end comes a lot of pions. <laughs> so that's what's coming out of the target ball. Now those pions come out of the target, sort of, they don't all aim straight in the same direction that you made the protons go. They tend to come out as a little spray. So right downstream of the target are what we call these magnetic focusing horns. This is a finished horn. This is the smaller one. We have two of them. There's a smaller one close to the target and then a larger one. 
And they basically act like a lens. And what's behind me here is a whole new poster. This is a second form. So these are two pieces. This would go up there and attach to that thing up there. It's a full-size inner conductor of our second floor, and it was used as a welding practice for the real one. So now it's a museum. But that's basically how big it is. So it doesn't look like a magnet. What it does, this whole thing, in fact, if you saw, when you see the finished product, all you see is all this water piping and a cylinder. The form shape, which looks like this, is inside this outer cylinder. So this whole horn thing sits inside just a straight cylinder of steel. The way the thing works is that you pulse a current along the outside cylinder. The inside and the outside are connected at the upstream end. The current wraps around and comes back in on the inner conductor. So you have current going one way in the cylinder, current going the other way in the cylinder. A long beam line, photons are going to go through the middle of this thing, ions. And when you draw it out on paper, if you have the current going that way, the magnetic field is going to make a circular magnetic field between those two conductors. And it varies in intensity according to the shape of this thing. It will be stronger near this neck where it's very, very narrow and it gets a little deeper out here. That circular magnetic field literally acts as a lens in the same way that a glass lens acts on light. The particles coming out in a spray get captured by that field and all together get focused. And this is a little different from the way, say, a dipole magnet or a quadrupole magnet works, like we use in the beam lines. A dipole field is only going to bend all the charged particles either one way or the other way, up or down, depending on their charge. And if it was twisted the other direction, they can bend sideways. Quadrupoles kind of focus, but again, they only focus in a horizontal view or a vertical view, depending on how they're oriented. If you focus vertically, you defocus horizontally, vice versa. So you could focus this beam with a string of quadrupoles, but it would take a lot of distance. And we don't want to take up that distance because in the meantime, those pions are going to start decaying. And you notice what they decay to, the neutrino that we want, is a neutral particle that has no charge. Once it's made, once that pion decays and makes that neutral neutrino, we have no control over the direction of the neutrino anymore. The way we control the direction of the final neutrinos is by focusing the parent particle. So we want all this focusing effect to take place in as short a distance as possible and before these guys decay. Now, having said that, that we need a little short distance to focus them all, we then have this very long, like three quarters of a kilometer long decay pipe. Um, in fact, for the energy beam, this beam line was designed to produce different peak spectrums of neutrinos. Um, and the higher energy you go, the longer the pions would take to decay. So the, the whole length of the decay tunnel was actually designed for what we call our high energy neutrino beam, which is not where we end up running for the purposes of the experiment. The best place for us to run was at our low energy neutrino beam. So in fact, all of those pions have decayed basically in that part of the decay tunnel. <laughs> The rest of it is just, they're just coasting neutrinos.